Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel, Red Elevator. L'ascenseur rouge. El ascensor rojo for all of you <laughs> around the globe. Just having some fun with you here today. On this episode, we are going to look at the six worst design pet peeves of mine that are eating away at me. You do not want to miss this. Follow me. <laughs> So today, since so many of you ask me, I am wearing a silk dress that was just released from All Saints. It apparently has a very subtle tie-dye pattern to it, and it is very comfortable and very easy to wear this summer. So I was having a discussion with a friend of mine, and she said, Nina, I've been watching your YouTubes, and I really enjoy them, but one thing I don't know and I don't understand is what it is that you don't like. You always talk about what you do like, but what don't you like? And so today I am bringing you the things that upset me the most. Now keep in mind, these offenses are purely subjective. This is just my opinion, little old me who thinks these things. So don't take it to heart if you are committing these um, criminal acts. But uh, in my opinion, it is something that shouldn't happen. But again, we all have free will and this is just my opinion. I'm going to share with you my biggest criminal offense at the very end of this video. We only have six, so I highly recommend that you stay till the end because the one that upsets me the absolute most, the biggest offense of all, will be revealed at the very end of this video. So before we get into it, I'm gonna ask you guys quickly, please to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up. Really is helpful and I would very much appreciate it. So the first pet peeve that I'm gonna share with you is a two-fold pet peeve. And it's going to be very simple. All of my pet peeves are very simple to correct and very simple to identify. So this is for all of the world to understand and hopefully adhere to. I'm here to make the world a more beautiful place. Hence my biggest pet peeve or one of my biggest pet peeves is having a curtain that does not touch the floor. This is a terrible idea no matter how you look at it. Under any circumstance, if you have curtains that are not touching the floor, then you might as well not have them at all. I really recommend that if you don't have a budget to do custom curtains, which a lot of us don't, and I don't blame you because they are expensive, to do a little bit of research and find a website that can make the, the curtains the length that you need. Do your measurements measure from as high as possible and make sure that they at least kiss the floor. Kissing the floor is what I absolutely like. If it puddles, it puddles. That's not offensive at all. It could be a very artistic statement, especially if you have linen or something that puddles so the fabric looks nice. But in under no circumstance should your curtains be shorter than the floor height. And within this realm of offenses what i wanted to say is that do get the tallest curtain possible go as high as you can to the ceiling as that has a great impact on the height of the windows second offense is putting a rug in a room without having pieces of furniture on the rug i.e in a living room where the rug floats on top under a coffee table and then you've got your furniture basically floating outside of the rug without any of the pieces being on the rug that is terrible now, if you have a rug you love that was an heirloom rug, I know I've received some rugs that I love that are too small for my parents. What I do is I layer them or I put them in a space that can actually handle it, perhaps on the side of a bed or in a different space or a little hallway. So you don't have to get rid of your rugs, but what you need to do is make sure and place them so that they are in size and in proportion to the room. If you haven't seen my uh, Ruggable collection, I'm gonna do a shameless plug here at Ruggable.com. The Nina Takish designed rugs will definitely transform your room and make sure that you adhere to the rug sizes. If you're unsure, always go one size bigger. Next, do not under any circumstance, even if it's dire, even if you live in a tiny, tiny, Tiny home, which a lot of us do because we live in big cities. Do not, do not, please, I beg you, I beseech you, do not push your couch against the wall under any circumstance. If you live in a tiny, tiny, tiny place, then at least have some distance between the wall, even if it's just 
three inches. Why? Furniture needs to breathe. Things need to be in a space. Typically, I say, move away. Move away as far as you can, as far as the room permits. Center the room with your furniture. Leave the walls airy, and then adorn your walls with art and beautiful objects. The penultimo, I don't know how to say that in English. Sometimes, funny enough, uh, even though English is my second language, I forget how to say certain words. Actually, English is my third language. But the second to last, that's it, pet peeve, is art being hung too high. When you walk into a home, you don't want to say, oh, this is a lovely home. Oh, I see your art, your art, your art. No, you want to see art at eye level. Art should be at eye level. Take a look at my paintings. Take a look at what I have in my home. Everything is at eye level. Now you're gonna say, I know it, I can hear it already. Well, what if I'm short and somebody's tall? Pick the average. What's the average height of a person? I would say it keeps getting taller and taller, but five, six, five, five is an average. So, you know, think of that as your barometer and do eye level. If you are a German family who is super tall and I have lots of German friends that are so tall, then perhaps you go a little bit higher because you know you really are designing for yourself and you wanna be able to look at your art at eye level. You wanna be able to walk past your artwork and be like, that's pretty. And that is what people need to see. So don't forget, bring your art down, please. The absolute guillotine, worst offense, punishable by death, please don't take it personally, I'm just making a joke, is, are you ready for this? I, this is gonna be very controversial and I'm, gonna, I'm just going to say it and I say it to my clients and I say it with a straight face and I'm gonna say it to you guys because I love you guys. No family photos on your walls, none. Not one, not two, not three, and certainly not wedding photos. I'll tell you why. When somebody comes to your house, they don't wanna see personal photos of you on the walls. They wanna see you. They wanna see your children live and in person. The last thing they wanna do is find you adorned on the walls. It just looks tacky. That's the only way I can put it. And I hope I don't get a lot of hate because it comes from a good place. I love my family more than anyone on the planet. It's a little too personal. Now, I understand you want pictures of your family, so I would, if you must, perhaps get a digital frame that rotates photos, put it in a discreet area of the home. And if, you know, grandma comes over or a friend comes over, you can grab that and, and you can go through photos and have a discussion about it. But seeing, you know, a 1984 Christmas photo of the entire family that's now dated because your children have grown up just does not look good. So I am begging you, pleading with you, never ever to do it, especially if they're staged photos. That is the criminal offense of all offenses. Now, if you have an artistic photo of a child of yours that's like, uh, you know, underwater or there's a wind blowing and it's an artistic statement, blow it up. By all means, I love that. Black and white photography, something that's artistic and will always be relevant. But the family portrait of all of you standing, which you went to a professional photographer for, I know you're proud of it and I think that's wonderful. That should be in a private space. If you want to see it, you want to display it, put it in your boudoir, put it in your bedroom room but not in public spaces it's not really for you to shove your family into other people's eyeballs that's my thought that's my personal view thank you so much for joining me on this what must you not do versus my worst pet peeve why am i talking robotically i don't know episode of the red elevator i would like to know which is your worst pet peeve one to six what's the worst offense for you and dying to know if it's the same as mine down below in your comments. I can't wait to see you guys next week, but before we go, shout out to Jen on the Run for suggesting that I do my pet peeves, Joanna George and Rosetta Todd for being fantastic, loyal followers of this channel. I love you guys so, 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 so much. So I can't wait to see you again next week on the Red Elevator. Until then.